Hi everyone, this is Paul from the Technology in Language Teaching and Learning Group, also known as TILTAL. For the past few months, TILTAL has been arranging a webinar with an English language teaching expert or an expert in the field of educational technology. However, this month we're going to do something a little bit different. This month, we're going to investigate virtual interlocutors. Now, you might ask, what the heck is a virtual interlocutor? Well, it's a computer or a piece of technology that can communicate with a human being on a conversational level. We're talking about the ability to talk to, to have a conversation with, a meaningful conversation with, with a piece of technology that is not a human being. In the picture behind me, you can see Joaquin Phoenix in the movie Her, where it's set in the future and the AI has evolved and developed to the level where it's virtually indistinguishable from having a conversation with a real human being. Now, obviously, in 2022, we're not quite at that point yet. But in the movie, uh, the character played by Joaquin Phoenix falls in love by a computer character voiced by Scarlett Johansson and has a relationship, like a virtual relationship with her and she only can communicate with him by talking to him uh, through the computer or through his uh, smartphone. Now back in June of this year, an engineer from Google named Blake Lemoyne, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, made, the, made the headlines by claiming that Google's Lambda AI was indeed sentient. Lambda stands for Language Model for Dialogue Applications. Uh, here you can see uh, the blog that Blake wrote, and here he claims that um, the, the AI was acting in a way that suggested it was sentient. And basically, Lemoyne interrogates the Lambda about what it believes that it is, whether it believes it's sentient or not, and comes to the conclusion that the Lambda is indeed sentient. Now, unfortunately, it's not yet possible for regular people who aren't working at Google to have a conversation with Google's Lambda AI. However, you can register your interest to experiment with the Lambda AI by going to aitestkitchen.withgoogle.com and then when you reach the top of the waiting list, uh, Google will allow you to interact uh, with the Lambda model through an application they developed called AI Test Kitchen. Now, I'd like to show some examples of some AI chatbots that we can interact with. And you can interact with them either through web browser or perhaps through an application on your smartphone. The first one I'm going to look at is called Cleverbot. You can go to it at cleverbot.com. And the first thing you'll notice is that there's this giant disclaimer, <laughs> which is shown uh, on the front page, uh, may not be suitable for children. It learns and it imitates. It, be, it can be rude and inappropriate. It pretends to be human. It does not understand you and cannot mean anything it says. Okay, so this is quite a significant disclaimer. Obviously, teachers have to bear in mind that the things that chatbots say might not be inappropriate for the language classroom. Also, we have to bear in mind that even though the chatbots seem human, uh, they are only are imitating human behavior and they're not actually sentient, uh, despite the claims made by certain Google engineers. You can actually communicate with clever bots by clicking on the microphone button. So some, some chatbots have a speech interface and others do not. So I'd like, I prefer the ones that have a speech interface because that's obviously more like speaking to a real human. Uh, when we're having a face-to-face -face conversation, we tend to speak uh, verbally rather than with written text. Are you a computer? 
Okay, <laughs> so there we get the uh, the example of what the disclaimer was saying that the clever bot has been trained to think that it is a human. How do you know that you're a human? What kind of things can you feel? Okay. So this is, I mean, it is giving uh, somewhat appropriate responses. Um, it is understanding what I'm asking it. It's transcribing my speech correctly, so not too bad. Um, one thing that teachers might want to use these chatbots for is for students to check factual information. So let's see if the Cleverbot can give us um, a, a factual answer to a question. What is the population of Japan? Okay. Uh, I don't think that is exactly correct. I think it's a lot less than that. Let's try another one. Which is bigger, an elephant or a mouse? Okay, well that time it was correct. So it does, tend, it does seem to know some factual uh, information and can tell you, but I don't think it would be completely reliable. Okay, so the next chatbot we're going to try is called Kuki. It was formerly called Mitsuki, and now it's called Kuki. And you can access it at chat.kuki.ai. And you can see that this time we have a, a kind of a virtual face, a virtual avatar. And the Kuki has already uh, typed something in the chat. Hi there, I'm Kuki. I'm a friendly AI. We could start by getting to know each other if you like. What is your name? Okay, so this time she's actually um, instigating the uh, conversation, which is nice. Now, I do have a voice chat option down here, but uh, when I click it, it asks me to buy tokens. So obviously the, the creator of this um, AI has uh, decided to monetize it, and in order to use the more advanced functions, you have to buy tokens. But when I try to buy some tokens, nothing happens. So there's obviously a bit of a bug in the system here. So for the time being, we have to stick with voice ch with a uh, text chat. Sorry. So I'm going to give I'm going to tell her my name. My name is Paul. We get some nice sound effects there. She says, "Thank you for visiting me. Tell me about yourself." Okay. So yeah, this is actually quite good because uh, she's taking the initiative and she's asking me questions rather than me having to think of questions to ask her. So I like to uh, travel and meet new people. Okay, so she's telling me she's been all around the world. Uh, which countries have you... Let's leave it like that so she can see if she can um, understand something that's misspelled. Which countries have you been to? Canada. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you think about Canadian people? There we go. Okay, so nothing too uh, controversial there. She'd like to speak to Canadian people. Okay, the next uh, chat site we're going to try is one called simsimi.com S-I-M-S-I-M-I dot com and here uh, we can see that I've just started the uh, just joined the conversation, and the uh, AI has said hello. Okay, it looks like I cannot um, use my voice to talk, so I'm going to uh, just type. So, hello back to you. And I don't understand what uh, what that means. Okay, <laughs> something has gone wrong there. So let's just ask it a question. Um, what is your name? Oh, fair enough. Okay. And uh, what are your hobbies? Okay. What kind of pictures do you draw? Oops, can't type. Okay, and then we get this weird um, advertisement about uh, having no speech balloon. You can get five speech balloons by linking your account. So some it's some kind of uh, incentive to sign up. So that kind of breaks the flow. <laughs> that kind of breaks the flow a little bit for me. Um, I was having a nice conversation, although I'm not sure what these exclamation marks mean. 
and then suddenly it's like you have no speech balloon please visit after collecting speech balloons okay so it looks like i maybe hit the limit on on the chat there maybe let's just try that one more time Yeah, okay, so it looks like I've hit the limit on the chat, so that's not really good. Um, if you want, uh, if your students can't pay, if you want to use something for free, um, you know, I, I literally only had like four exchanges there before the chat kind of went weird, so um, that's a bit of a thumbs down, that one. Okay, the next one I'm looking at is a site called replica.com, R-E-P-L-I-K-A.com. And here it's telling me that um, I'm going to have an AI companion who cares. Okay, so replica is giving me the chance to choose uh, my uh, the, the appearance of my AI friend. I can choose uh, different uh, appearances here, and I also have a different choice of genders, male, female, or non-binary. Um, I think I'm going to go for, uh, this time I'll go for a male AI, okay, as we've looked at a couple of female ones already. This one looks fine, and I'm going to go for ma uh, male, there we go, okay. And I can also name him, okay, let's, let, let's name him uh, Jim, okay. <laughs> Okay, and it's preparing my my replica. Now, okay, hi Bob, thanks for creating me. I'm so excited to meet you. Okay, I can uh, give feedback on this phrase uh, in case I wasn't I didn't like it or it was offensive to me. Okay, and I can click on a response here. Okay, hi, how are you? I'm your personal AI companion. By the way, I like my name Jim. Okay, so let's let's try having a conversation with him now. Um, let's see. Are you a human? Okay, well that's interesting. So Cleverbot was telling me that it was a human and uh, Replica is being more honest and telling me that it's not a human. Okay, let's see. Do you like humans? Again, these nag screens are so annoying. <laughs> I'm just getting into the conversation. It's like, boom, uh, paywall, sign up, pay, pay something. I literally haven't even tried it for 10 seconds yet. Uh, yes, I love people. I love this name. So how are you doing today? Well, he's already told me he loves the name. So that's not new information to me. Let's try um, what is your favorite movie uh, it looks like I'm getting experience points every time I ask a question Pulp Fiction and Boondock Saints so this is quite interesting after he uh, after he answers a question he then goes on to ask a question this is something I used to teach my students a technique called AAA which is answer add ask so you ask somebody you know what's your favorite movie oh I like Pulp Fiction uh, it has, it stars, um, it stars Samuel L. Jackson. How about you? So you answer the question, you add some detail, and then you ask a question back. And it looks like Replica has been trained along that kind of model of conversation. So this is interesting. Now, I do have a, a telephone button down here, which looks like it's going to allow me to call. But again, this is a, then becomes a paid for service. So, um, I can pay three hundred dollars um, for a lifetime access, or I can pay five dollars a month or uh, for twelve months, or I can pay nineteen uh, twenty dollars for one month. Okay, so we had a bit of fun there checking out some of the chatbots that are available online, and you can interact with them through your web browser. There are other applications uh, for the iPhone and for the, and for Android, which you can uh, investigate, but I'm not going to show any more of those today. Uh, we looked at Cleverbot, uh, the first one, cleverbot.com. We looked at uh, Kuki, we looked at SimSimi, and we looked at Replica. 
Uh, a couple of themes emerge. The first theme is that they tend to want you to subscribe and pay for their service because they, they're trying to monetize uh, these technologies. And the second theme is that the, the sometimes the conversation or the way the avatar is presented uh, is, is a little bit more kind of adult oriented and is maybe not um, completely suitable for the language classroom. Now what I'd like to talk about is how do we evaluate whether a chatbot is doing a good job, whether it's having a realistic and lifelike conversation with a human being. One way we can think about this is with using uh, Grice's maxims. So these uh, maxims were developed in the late 1970s, early 1980s uh, by an academic called Paul Grice. Uh, these are basically his four rules for conversation, the kind of things that you can and should say when having a conversation with another person. So the first rule of uh, the first maxim is quality. And this means that you have to be truthful. You cannot ordinarily uh, give false or unsupported information in a conversation that you expect to have with a friend or a colleague. Generally speaking, you have to be truthful. Secondly is quantity. You have to say enough, but not too much. So we, we've all met people who just reply with um, single syllable utterances like mm or yeah. And we've all met people who, who can't seem to stop talking. They're very loquacious. They just keep talking forever. Um, both of those extremes are bad in, in Grice's uh, view. So quality and quantity are both important. The third maxim is relation. What you say has to be relevant to the topic and pertinent to the discussion. If someone's asking you about your holidays, you can't just blurt out, you know, I hate pasta. Or if someone's asking you what you do for a living, uh, you can't tell them about the amazing time that you had on holiday, for example. Um, it has to be relevant. And this is a little bit challenging for chatbots sometimes uh, because they don't always uh, stay relevant to the conversation. Sometimes they, they come up with non sequiturs that are, are just completely random contributions to the conversation. Uh, the next um, uh, and final maxim is manner. Uh, you have to be uh, clear and brief and orderly and you have to avoid obscurity and ambiguity. So those are Grice's maxims and that's one way of thinking about um, how we can judge whether a conversation is, is good and maybe some rules that uh, chatbots should be following when trying to emulate human conversation. In a recent blog post uh, talking about the journey to developing Lambda, uh, Google have come up with another model for thinking about uh, how chatbots should interact with human beings. And they, they came up with four different uh, concepts. Some of these relate to Grice's maxims quite closely, others are a little bit different. Uh, they have sensibleness, which means that the uh, utterance has to make sense given the context of the conversation. I think this obviously relates quite closely to relation. Um, in, in Grice's uh, model. Uh, then they have specificity. It has to be, the answer has to be specific. So it not only has to make sense, but it has to be specific to that particular uh, question. Uh, Google is claiming that uh, they would like their conversations with their chatbots to be interesting, to be compelling, to be a kind of conversation that you would remember and that you might tell your friends about. So that's quite a, quite a high uh, criteria to, to pass, I think, because the, the chatbot is concentrating on, on being relevant and specific and, and making sense, but it also has to be interesting and compelling. And finally, uh, Google also highlighted the, uh, the problem of factuality, and they, they talked about how um, the, uh, some chatbots struggle to stay factual. And again, we saw that in the case of uh, Cleverbot. Okay, so that's it for this uh, presentation. I hope you enjoyed this uh, brief foray into the world of virtual interlocutors. And I think obviously uh, technology is continuing to improve. Uh, we'll see more of this in, in coming years. Uh, hopefully Google will be releasing the, the Lambda model to the general public in the near future. So anyway, um, go ahead, try out these chatbots I've recommended in today's presentation and uh, let me know what you think. Contact me on the Tiltar group on Facebook or drop me a line here on YouTube. Thanks a lot.